Welcome to my video on Blender AI tools. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing some amazing AI powered add-ons for Blender that can take your creations to the next level. I'll be covering everything from generating textures to rendering scenes and using control net rigs inside of Blender. And I'll also demonstrate how these tools can streamline your workflow and unlock new possibilities for your art and animation. But that's not all. I'll also be revealing a special add-on at the end of the video, so make sure you watch till the end to find out what that add-on is. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the exciting world of Blender and AI. Starting off with what I think is the most exciting one, um, this open pose, version 7 depth canny landmark, um, is basically a rig inside of Blender uh, that is a free add-on that you could download, and here's how it's used. Basically, you download the rig tools, then you extract it into whatever directory that you want, then you open this Blender file, and you're met with this. This is a rig that you can control within Blender to generate depth maps, and basically control the position of your character that you want to generate, like whatever character that you want to generate and whatever model inside of uh, Stable Diffusion Web UI, you can choose it right here. I mean, control the hands, the feet, and also the face, what gestures you're making inside of this program, then render whatever it is that you posed, then take it inside of multi-control net, inside of the Web UI of uh, Automatic 11.11, then uh, take out whatever character that you want. Um, I could talk about this all day or I could show you. So, sorry if I took too long explaining it. Here I enabled the depth uh, model. And now I'm going to zoom in on the hands. I'm going to press period on my numpad. And this control right here allows me, when I press S, to close up the fist. This is basically used like any other Blender rig. So if you've used Blender rigs before, this is quite easy for you to do. Otherwise, I mean, Blender is the most accessible 3D software out there. Um, I will leave the link to download Blender 3.5 and some documentation to help you start out. But you can just repeat after me. All I'm doing is mean, I'm pressing R to rotate the controls that you see here. These boxes are the controls in the 3D space. I'm using G to grab the boxes that control the rig, so R to rotate, S to scale, G to grab. That's all I'm doing. Now that I have my character where I want it, make sure you're grabbing the right controls. Now I'm going to go to this index finger and simply press R, X to rotate it up. Going to Make the pose that I want. Here again, Rx. This looks weird. The reason why I chose the devil horns is that it's an international symbol. I didn't want to make uh, the peace sign that could be interpreted as an insult in some countries. And here he is doing the Spider-Man pose. Okay, this is good enough. I'm going to press Control alt 0 and focus on the upper part of my character. And what this open pose version 7 does better than the older versions such as uh, 4.6 or 46, you can also control the pose of the face. So not only do you have the depth model, you can also have the, the canny model for the face as well, once you enable it here. So let me give him a smiling face. And now let us take our render. And now, once you're done rendering your character, this is the result that you're going to be met with. And it used to be that you had to manipulate some nodes inside the editor so you could get the depth and the canny and the uh, HED. Sorry, the HED is not available here. Uh, it's only the canny and the depth, the most important ones. But now, uh, this program, this latest version, it separates them into different directories out of which you can download the images and upload them to Multi-ControlNet to get the result of the character that you want. And now my Stable Diffusion Web UI, I'm going to insert the images that I rendered from Blender into my control model. Here I'm going to insert the open pose and choose the open pose model. And I'm not going to choose a preprocessor because this is already an open pose. And now I'm just going to choose uh, perhaps the checkpoint that I want and insert any random uh, prompt and see what happens. And here is modern Disney style Kratos and for the life of me I could not get him to smile not even with control net. Um, this is the closest thing Kratos has ever been to smiling 
and instead of his hands doing the devil horns, it's instead his blades on the back of his on the, on his back that are doing the devil horns. So close enough. I mean, these are the results that I got with minimal with minimal prompts. Modern Disney styles Kratos, and I don't want any bad anatomy or low resolution. And this is what I got. Um, he's not exactly doing devil horns with his hands, but this is more accurate. When I used the canny model, it gave me something, uh, something weird to say the least. Perhaps because most of the people that are using this model are using anime diffusion models. And I must say that I found this it works better with anime models and cartoon models without specific prompts and without specific characters within them. Um, apparently not even AI can make that of boy smile, so let's move on to the next tool that I want to show you. As for the second tool, just in case you never installed an add-on for Blender before, just download the AI render zip file from the link that I'm gonna leave down below, the description, and once you're inside of Blender, enter edit, preferences, and look for the zip file that you downloaded in whatever directory that you had it in, install it, then once you're here, just sign up for a dream studio signing up is free however the only downside of this uh, add-on the free add-on that you only have limited generations then you're gonna have to start paying so just in case um let's try generating things within blender for free right now maybe you're gonna decide to sign up for it later um personally i have not signed up to it yet in my render settings i'm going to enable ai render and I've already added materials and UV unwrapped my model, so you should do so as well. Enable AI render. And I'm going to leave this, let's try 768 by 768. Let's apply a preset style. The prompt that I'm going to do is vintage UFO in the middle of the city. Let's try what. Let's see what happens when I do that. Still the same image. Let's see my AI render. Um, this is interesting. Well, this is not a city and uh, this is not a vintage UFO. But let's keep trying. I'm going to change the style that I have right now. Let's see what I happen when I choose this one. This is a better image, honestly. So now we're getting somewhere. As you can see, there's a city behind and somehow there are starry nights underneath. So let me adjust my, let me adjust some things on my end. And the results I'm getting with minimal prompts are honestly not that bad. I mean, uh, I guess what this is doing is it's taking my image, then putting it in image to image inside of uh, Web, the web UI, uh, but I'm staying in Blender. I guess this is what it's doing. Um, it still doesn't uh, justify the $10 mark, to be honest, for 100 images. I mean, I can do this infinitely inside of uh, the web UI. However, if you're someone who prefers to not leave Blender, this is an option for you. I mean, this gave me a decent result with minimal prompts, as I said. And there are many styles, like preset styles, that I can apply here. Like, let's try Dan Mumford, which looks somewhat eerie there we go i'm starting to get even better results it has like the city in the back and uh, my prompt was steampunk ufo in the middle of a city this looks kind of cool i mean with more control let's see with the advanced options let's say if i give the prompt a bit more strength let me give it eight the model i'm going to use 1.5 and dpm euler a Let's see what happens when I do that. Way better results when I'm using the Substable Diffusion 1.5 version. Now let's try to generate a new image from this one. New image from last AI image. See, I mean, this looks kind of cool. Again, this is a very exciting tool. I'm not uh, like undermining it or anything. This is fantastic, but I get to do more now with Stable Diffusion. I can just render my image and keep uh, experimenting in, in the image to image uh, tab in stable diffusion i mean if this was free it would be fantastic but i was surprised that when i signed up they asked me for ten dollars after 125 images um i will let you decide if it's worth uh, that much 
Uh, personally, I think I'm going to wait until uh, we get a better version of Stable Diffusion than the 2.1. I'm not gonna pay f to do something I can already do in 1.5, and I'm not that uncomfortable going outside of Blender to use Stable Diffusion. Now, the first thing that came to my mind when the AI craze started a couple of months ago was, can I generate textures and import them to Blender? And the answer is yes, using this add-on. Now, with this add-on, and the only thing difficult about it is the installation process. It could be a bit taxing. So I left a quick video in the description uh, that you can refer to. I also left the necessary documents that you could read through. And uh, after you install it, everything's smooth sailing from there. Now I'm using Stable Diffusion 2.0 because it's the most stable one, um, pun intended, uh, with this add-on. And all you have to do, once you have installed your add-on in the preferences, it's called Dream Textures, I believe. Yes. After you do that, you can install whatever version of Stable Diffusion, whatever, whatever checkpoint, so to speak, like version 1.5, which does not work this well with the with this one. Um, I recommend Stable Diffusion version 2 or 2.0 and above. So what I'm going to do is go to Dream. Uh, the hotkey is in, if you're confused. And my pipeline is going to be Stable Diffusion, the model, Stable Diffusion 2. And I'm going to generate textures. And how I'm going to go about it is I'm going to go to the image editor insert my prompt here and I want it to be seamless and the subject is going to be my prompt so for example I want a green lizard scale let's see what happens when I press generate I'm gonna keep my iterations to one and I'm going to apply the texture that I generated to this box right here after I subdivide it, shade it smooth, and go into the shading editor, shift A, image texture, I'm going to choose one of the green lizard scales that I've generated, and for the mapping, I'm going to add shift A, value, for the scale, okay, now you've probably noticed something, that this PBR material is missing a lot. For example, it's missing uh, depth information, or in Blender we call it uh, displacement, where it's missing bump information, it's missing normals, and it's missing smoothness. But there's actually another program that's free to use that can generate these for you. Uh, in case that you don't have Photoshop or otherwise. So let us jump into that program, generate some depth maps, or as I should say, bump maps for this uh, physical based material, and come back to Blender. And I have to credit user Vertex Rage for directing me to this website because I haven't seen anyone else use it other than him, and it was a very useful website for me to use when I was searching how to create, uh, how to easily create um, uh, PBR materials from. Uh, a diffuse map and the interface for this program is very simple as you see here I'm going to clear everything out and start off again the first thing that I'm going to do is to press the P button to upload my diffuse map now it's going to do to give you which directory do you want to upload your diffuse map from and I left it on my desktop you should do so as well so you can easily find it and from your diffuse map you have to generate the height map. Press create. This is how the height map is going to look. The height map basically or the bump map or the displacement map, uh, it means that the white uh, parts are the ones that are closer to the camera and the black parts are the ones that are further away from the camera. And I want it to be the opposite. Now I can invert it once I'm inside Blender, but let me try to invert it over here. That's what I want. I want these scales to be on the outside and the others to be on the inside. I'm going to set this as my height map. And I'm also going to do the same with my normal map. I'm going to create a normal map. Cool. Now onto the metallic map. 
the same as before. Same thing with the smoothness, and everything's easy to use, by the way. Um, sometimes the default is the best to go with. I'm just adjusting it so it won't be difficult for me to modify once I'm inside Blender. I'm gonna use a color ramp uh, to adjust uh, how much, uh, how smooth my material is. The edge map is not necessary, to be honest, but I'm just gonna keep it here. To you, so you, you know I can get a good or you know what I don't need the edge map let's see how it's looking right now and usually I would spend hours in the shading node editor to create something like this but now I can create it very quickly the ambient inclusion map the ambient inclusion is basically the parts uh, that are darker are occluded by the light and the parts that are wider are the ones that are um, closer to the light. You get what I mean? So these parts are closer to the light, and these parts are going to be occluded by it. It adds a level of realism. Here's the ambient inclusion power. And now let us show the full material. Fantastic. Now it's time to go back to Blender. And now back in Blender, I'm going to import the images that I made. I'm going to press Shift D, select my images. Here I'm going to select the ambient occlusion, and I'm going to mix it, the original color. Press Shift A. I want a mix. Set it to color, multiply. and up the factor. Now we've set up the albedos. Time to move on to the smoothness. I'm going to add a color ramp to have more control over my smoothness. This is good. The inner parts are wet and the outer parts are less wet, so to speak. Let me up the values here. This is how you can get good smoothness. Set up the metallic layer. Right now I'm more concerned with the bump map and the normal map. The normal map is also an uncolored data map. To get the best effect, you're gonna have to hook it up to the mapping node of the strength, and it's already coming together. Shift A bump. We don't have to use invert because I already inverted it in the program before I came into here, if you remember. And honestly, again, I would spend hours doing this in the shading editor before I discovered this add-on. This made things so much easier. And now the final add-on that I'm going to be showing off to you today is basically an add-on to end all other add-ons. Uh, this is going to be ChatGPT in Blender. This add-on basically does your work for you. I mean, this is the idea behind it. This is what it's going to be doing in the future. For example, I enter a simple prompt here where it says enter your message. Generate a pink monkey. I press execute. 
it generated a pink monkey for me. It, uh, what I was saying is, to use this model perfectly, or uh, most efficiently, you're gonna have to use prompts uh, that are relevant inside Blender, is what I'm trying to say. And here's an idea. Let's see what happens when I do this. Generate a donut. I must say not as good as Blender Gurus, but it's getting there. All I need is to shade it. Okay. There we go. A shortcut to making a donut. Of course, what it did basically is added a torus, the closest thing in Blender to a donut. But again, just an example of what this model can do, what this add-on can do, if you use uh, proper uh, prompts with it. I'm going to try to do some serious prompts right now and see how powerful this is. And here is, for example, a prompt that I made. Um, generate 20 cubes and uh, distribute them randomly. That's like all I had to write in. And this is what it gave me. It looks like something you would see in a modern art painting. So simple, so simple prompts like generate 20 cubes of different sizes and distribute them randomly and Iterating upon that simple prompt can give you different results and satisfying results in GPT 3.5. On GPT 4, you can use even more complex prompts to give you even better results, but let's stick to 3.5, the free version. Now, give them random sizes. And what do you know? It did. Um, it gave them random sizes. Uh, I think this is the beginning to generating city scenes in Blender with ChatGPT. Instead of using perhaps geometry nodes, you could just write down whatever it is that you want and ChatGPT will uh, write a Python code and apply it in Blender. And let's see what happens when I combine ChatGPT add-on with the Stable Diffusion add-on. Okay, so let us render this scene as a futuristic city and neon lights. And here are some nice results that I got combining uh, ChatGPT with Stable Diffusion. Um, some of them are questionable and uh, not very similar to my, um, what do you call it, scene, but maybe that's because I'm using free versions and these versions are early access as of now. Uh, I can see this becoming a workflow in the future. And there you have it. Those were four AI tools that you could use right now in Blender 3.5. If you found this video useful and informative, uh, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. By doing so, you'll be notified of future videos where I showcase new tips, workflows, and tools for Blender and other creative software. Your support helps me create more content so I can help take your skills to the next level. Thank you for watching me, and I look forward to seeing you again.